So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a clear and very simple guide on how to complete the Frozen Dawn Zombies map inside of World War 2 Zombies. This is a pretty difficult easter egg if you're attempting this on solo, but it's definitely easier on co-op so I advise you have four players just to make life simple. And whilst you don't need any consumables, I would recommend you jump into the game with a few max ammos just in case because you're going to need it at some points during this fight and maybe even some double points if you just want to build up a high amount of points so you can keep getting armor as well as getting all the perks and upgraded weapons. And if you want to attempt this easter egg on co-op but you don't have any players to play with then drop your PSN, Xbox Live or Steam names down below in the comments section to help you find some players. But without any further ado let's jump into this map and when you're playing this which I advise you do in co-op you can pretty much strategize and get a lot of things done all at once including multiple item fetch quests but we're going to break this all down and make this as easy to understand as possible for you all. So the first thing you want to do is obviously kill zombies on this rune pad here so that you can actually open the door and go into the ice caves and enter full. You want to start opening up the map by getting points by killing the undead of course but around the map you are going to find three little small blood pools which you need to fill up with souls for a particular wonder weapon quest. The easier and the earlier you do this obviously the better and easier it's going to be for you in the game in general so the first location is going to be in the ice caves to the left past the armor machine it's very simple just stand in here and kill zombies near it until you get a prompt on screen that you filled up the first pool from there you want to run to the opposite side of the ice caves and open this room here which will enter you into this really weird egyptian room here and there's going to be another pool of blood which you want to fill up with about five zombie souls and then once you've done that you want to run down the staircase and you're going to find a ravenstone slab you want to pick that up and you want to run to the overlook which is this sort of blood bridge and there's going to be a section where you can place this stone down and you'll be able to collect souls up and that will collect and complete all the three blood pools and if you make your way to the blood altar area of the map a whistling is going to spawn with a shield on his back once he's dead he will have dropped the shield and you can pick it up and you'll have the shield a tie stamped down below in the description is going to be specific parts of the video if you know how to get some of these weapons already but don't necessarily know how to get their upgrades or if you don't know how to get any of these weapons in general then this video will cover all of that so we've got on the shield so far the next one the weapon we're going to be going for is the normal scythe and to get that you simply enter this area of the map called the flactory just walk up to this little slab hold square and it's going to lock you in and you're going to have about two waves of zombies quite quick on so make sure you're taking those out and survive and once that is over you're gonna have the scythe and we're gonna start with the scythe upgrade here in this video before we go for the other melee weapons just because it is very quick and easy to do it's probably the first one that you can get done on as early a round as possible so once you have the scythe you want to make your way into the spawn room and buy one of the plain wreckage parts here you're gonna be able to pick up a wire piece that's one of two items we need for the upgrade and the second is to kill the corpse eater which is one of the new zombie types it's the one that runs around the map and gets the energy from zombies before it goes and kills you you can get one to spawn into the map very easily by using one of the teleporter pods around the map but you have to make sure that in the passageway section where one of these pods is located there is a brick wall which you press and will have a red outline on this circle on the brick that will enable you to get to pack a punch and also be able to spawn in these new corpse eaters so once you've ridden any of these pods and you've gone into pack a punch once and you've come back out you'll have one of these guys spawn simply with the scythe melee it and you'll get its spine and with those two parts make your way into the flactory and just simply put down the wire the spine and then have the scythe out and hold square as well and it will place the scythe down and it will be a soul box and you're going to need to kill about 15 to 20 zombies see so prompts on screen during this process of you starting the forge and then when you finished it by getting the required amount of zombie souls and once you've done that you'll notice no more souls will be going in 
in, there'll be a prompt on your screen, and you're gonna have to wait two full waves before you can pick the scythe back up. But once you've picked this scythe back up after the two waves, once you've picked it up, you simply want to use one of the teleporter pods, and it will take you into a special room where you're going to have to kill a few whistlings as well as corpse eaters, and it's basically a run through to teach you on the abilities of these upgraded melee weapons, as they're gonna be very useful for the boss fight. But once you've gotten your way out of there, you completed the trial, you'll have the upgraded scythe. The next melee weapon we're gonna go for is the Fulian Hammer. And to start this quest, you're gonna have to acquire the battery, which is in the spawn room. It's gonna be just to the right of the quick revive machine. You wanna pick that thing up and you're gonna wanna carry it all the way to the cauldron on the overlook section of the map. This is really a good thing to do as early on as possible in your co-op games as you're watching me do this right now in a solo game at quite a high rounds and I really don't recommend it. As soon as you've got the map open to this area, I'd say take the battery there as quickly as you can as early as possible. Place the battery into the cauldron then you simply got to get kills near the battery to charge it until this battery glows purple. Once you've done that, we are going to need to pick up four stones around the map. Luckily, these are always in the same position. They're just four and there's four locations for them. So the first one can be to the right of the speed cola perk machine, which is by the globe. So that's just parked really nicely here, just tucked away. The next one we're going to be going for is going to be in the ice caves to the right of a Raven Lord Wonder Weapon pedestal. So as soon as you open the map and you make your way into the ice cave, you simply go up to the right Wonder Weapon pedestal, just hold square, and you're going to pick up that stone there. The third stone we're going to be going for is going to be opposite Double Tap, which is going to be in a vase. So just by this drop-off point here in the Blood Altar section, just pick that one up. And the final stone is going to be in the morgue, just tucked behind this armor machine. Once you have all four of these stones you want to place these stones in the slots directly across the battery in the overlook and once the stones are placed you're going to notice that the blood flow is going to stop and there's going to be some glowing runes which are going to be spawning on the back side of where the stones were placed so run over to the front of this armor machine and read which runes are present now notice from left to right there are four different symbols and also around this general area you're going to notice there's going to be four different runes which are all going to be lit up you're going to have to match these up so say for instance the first rune you had on your left to right order was say an R. You're going to look around this section here and find that the rune which is labeled R. I need to get one kill, specifically one kill. By looking at the order of the runes that you have, you need to go around, find that rune and get one kill beside each of those rune symbols. Say your rune order looks like an F, R, F, M. You need to get one zombie killed by the F rune, then go to the R rune and kill one zombie, then go back to the F rune and kill another, and then go to the M rune and then kill one more zombie zombie and once you've completed this right you're going to notice that there's going to be some lightning bolts appearing in front of the battery and then the Fulian hammer is going to spawn walk up to it and it's going to teleport somewhere around the map when you found the hammer you're going to need to crouch and slowly walk towards it and then you'll notice the hammer will sort of tilt on its side and start flying around the map depending on you running into it you're going to eventually lead it back to where we place the battery but before then you're going to have to solve a little puzzle. Once the hammer has spawned in, there's going to be four pillars made of four cubes with lightning bolts surrounding the battery. There's going to be two which are already completed, and there's going to be two pillars which are not completed. Now, in this video's description, I have an amazing puzzle solver for this particular pillar puzzle created by Javano. So big, big shout out to him. If you open up this website, you're going to notice that it simply has one section for you to fill out. There's going to be block positions. So pillars are separated into four different blocks. We're going to label them A, B, C, and D. You simply input into this website the direction that your blocks are currently facing. If you look at the pillars which are lit up with lightning, that's the direction that these blocks should be facing. If you have a block which is facing the same direction as the lit up pillars, then you know that to input the block position for that particular block, if it's the first one being A, second B, third C, or the bottom one D, you only want to enter that as facing upwards because it's facing towards us, right? If a block is facing to the right, then you're gonna wanna input whichever block position that is as right. If it's facing away, so it's behind, then of course you wanna put down. And then if it's facing to the left, input that as left. Once you've got all the block positions inputted correctly, click the solve button, and there's gonna be a solution on the right, which will tell you how many times you need to shoot each block position for you to get the 
puzzle pillar solved. And once you've done that, you can move on to the second one. I highly advise you do this in co-op, have someone just keep a zombie around because in solo watching this, it is not easy by any means. It is actually pretty difficult. But just simply repeat with the second pillar, input the positions into this puzzle solver and then click solve and then do what the solution tells you to do. Shoot the pillars until it's all matched up and it's lit up and then you have all four pillars lit up with lightning and then find that hammer and you want to basically chase it around the map until it makes its way onto the bridge, the overlook where the battery is and the pillar is going to lightning bolt the hammer and it's going to allow you to pick it up and we will have the hammer. We're now going to work on the upgrade for the Fulian hammer, which is pretty simple. Make your way to the spawn room and you're going to notice that there is a purple rune which is now shining. There's a little bit of a puzzle here where you're going to have to hit one rune, run across the map to a location for another rune and hit that before the spark of your hammer runs out. So if you melee the rune with your hammer, if you've done it correctly, the head of the hammer will be charged and you want to quickly run to the rune which is located here in the ice caves and melee that rune with the hammer to transfer the charge to the rune. From there you're going to want to hit the rune again and run into the morgue area where there is another rune on the wall. Once this morgue rune is lit up and it's got a charge this is where it gets a little bit difficult and on co-op you want to have one of your teammates training a few zombies in the doorway which leads into the flactory. If you're playing on solo then god help you. I had to use camouflage in the end and run a away and activate the camouflage in the flactory so the zombies would stay but essentially you're going to watch me do it here. I charge my hammer with the morgue rune and then I quickly run down through this drop off point to the flactory and above the door is a rune. I want to kill a zombie with this charged hammer above the door and the rune and if done correctly the charge should be transferred to the rune above the door. For some reason every time I've tried this in co-op and even in solo I can never get it on my first try but you will eventually eventually get it. You just have to make sure a zombie is directly below the rune and you've got to kill the zombie with the charged Fulian hammer so that the rune sort of lightning gets transferred to the rune above the door. Once that's happened, you simply want to put the hammer away so get out a normal weapon and then bring out your hammer again and your hammer should be charged again now and you want to run into this room and simply melee this rune on the bottom and it's going to notice on screen you've charged the contraption and we now have a little bit of a puzzle here. Now I'd advise you start this puzzle and complete it on a quiet part of a round. Perhaps have some of your teammates running zombies around or if you're in solo either popping a camouflage or just basically running in and out of the room completing this puzzle as you wish. This puzzle's pretty simple. You complete it by getting all these raven tiles facing towards and turned purple. There's three variations of this and it gets more tricky with every variation but this puzzle stays exactly the same every single game. Now instead of watching me fail and basically shoot the wrong symbols and basically take even longer than is necessary to get this puzzle solved, in the description and on your screen now I have a hammer puzzle solver image thanks to Dame and that game as well as GeneM279 and I underscore win them all. This is a very easy to understand guide on where you need to shoot each of the puzzles to complete them in as least the amount of steps as possible. Simply shoot where where each square is numbered, so you shoot where one, two, is for example and that should help you complete the puzzle very very quickly and it's the same thing for the next two. The last two combinations do have a stone which has a skull on it. If you shoot this or shoot anyone which is above it, it will reset the puzzle so if at any points you're confused, you've got the combination completely wrong to the point where you just want to reset it, then you can shoot the skull to reset it. But with this on screen you shouldn't have any need to do that. You should be able to get these combinations down very very quickly. It really is as simple as just following what you're seeing on screen and shooting each of these squares in numerical order to complete each combination. Once you've completed all three of those puzzles, this is the scariest bit, but navigate to the overlook, which is this bridge, and there's going to be a transparent path that has been struck by lightning, and it is off of the overlook towards the big pyramid in the background. You need to carefully walk off the edge and follow the path without falling off. Zombies can follow you and kill you on this part, but you need to have the hammer 
out at all times whilst you're walking on this otherwise you're going to take damage and die but once you eventually walk far enough you're going to float up in midair and then you're going to be teleported to the storm raven trial which you're going to need to complete which involves killing zombies by throwing the hammer with r1 like a grenade then also getting rid of the bubble shielded around the zombies by breaking it by throwing the hammer once you completed the trial you're going to have the upgraded hammer which is the fist of Taurek. The next wonder weapon we're going to be going for is going to be the Thulean Flail. Now to start this quest you're going to have to find two books which are spread around the map. So these books can be spawning in either of these locations so be sure to check around the map but we have them on screen for you here. So there's going to be one to the overlook to the right of the battery cauldron you can see it just tucked away right there. Another location for a book can be in the passageway which is where you have the brick and the wall. It can be on the ground just there chilling. Another location for this book can be in the morgue just above the drop off into the flactory so where you're running the hammer past when you drop down just before you drop down there should be a book location there. The final one is going to be next to the massive blood pool in the blood altar room in front of the mystery box location. Once you've gotten these two books you want to navigate to the Thulean archives and there's going to be this weird podium which if you hold square or interaction with is going to place the books you picked up onto it and it should open and reveal a cipher room. Now we're not going to mess around with this cipher room just yet as we actually need to pick up three cogs around the map. The first cog can be in that cipher room just chilling on the ground so if it's there pick it up. Another cog location can be to the left of the staircase leading to the flactory on the overlook and it's just chilling next to this little fire cauldron here just almost falling off the map. The third cog location can be in this doorway connecting the gear works and the passageway it's just chucked here on some bones and skeletons if it's not there then you can just move on a fourth location can be on the ground to the right of the doorway connecting the flactory and the overlook so just right there and another location for the cog can be in the spawn room to the left of the lost and found package which is next to one of the teleporter pods and the final location for these cogs can be next to a mystery box location in the blood altar room. Once you have the three cogs, go into the gear works, which is going to be in the room with the globe. You're going to have to buy a door, which will lead you underground to the gear works. And you want to place these cogs into the gear works. And you're going to need to collect about 15 to 20 souls. You'll know when you've done this right, because there'll be a notification popping up saying that the orrery is now powered. And now we can use the cipher and you'll notice that there's little orbs spinning around the globe. There isn't any particularly easy way to explain this, but I will try my very best. If anyone in your game or yourself has a capture card or a mobile phone, just to take a picture of the cipher, it helps so you don't have to keep running into the cipher room all the time. But every game you play, this cipher is going to be a little bit different. So what you're seeing here on screen is what it was in our game. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same for you in your game. But we can use our cipher and our order in where we stop the globes to help you get yours done very quickly and easily. So we try to explain it as simply as this. This is what we see in our cipher room. So let's add some directions to this. So just like a compass, we're going to add a north, east, south and west. But you also notice in the bottom left, we've added a SC meaning speed cola. So the location of speed cola is where we have the words SC written. So for this to be very easy to explain, we're going to have to flip this image upside down. So by flipping it vertically, this is what we get. We still have speed cola in the bottom left, but now everything is flipped upside down. We then turn our circle 45 degrees to the left, so clockwise, and that lines up our original north point to be aligned with speed cola. So now looking at our image now with this all sort of modified a little bit, our red orb has to face away from speed cola, but has to be lined up perfectly with it. Looking at the cipher the way it's shown to you in the game, it throws you off a little bit with the perspective on where the other colors go in respective to the red. Sometimes it looks like it has to pass it. Sometimes it looks like you stop it before. This diagram should help make a little more sense. So we're going to stop the red where we think it's going to be. And when we flip this image, it's going to be 
parallel to speed cola but it's facing away from it and when you've gotten any of these colored orbs in their correct spots you're gonna hear this noise meaning you've got it right So we're looking to stop all the orbs in the shape and direction that the cipher room is showing to us. And by stopping each orb in their correct spot, you're going to hear that completion noise, meaning you've got the correct location. Each colored orb can stop in about eight different locations. But if you use what we have in our game here, so the red one is facing away from speed cola, as long as you got the red one correct, you can basically either guesswork where the other's stopping by using the cipher and just guessing the correct angle or by just simple trial and error. If at any point you get these wrong and you don't have the right order, simply just input each color wherever you think it's going to be and it's going to reset all these colored orbs and they're all going to be spinning again and then you can just retry again to stop them in the correct position. So in our game, by modifying the cipher a little bit and getting it flipped and then turning it 45 degrees clockwise, it originally ended with the red facing parallel to speed cola but away from it the purple being lined up pretty much almost in line with red but just stopping before it then we have the green that's stopping just before the purple and then we have the yellow which is sort of almost near speed cola but not quite if i've explained this and you still don't understand open up the description for some additional help but hopefully by either trial or error or by understanding what i've mentioned you can keep trying this until you eventually unlock the flail and from there we can begin the upgrade process for the flail which is actually pretty easy so the thing that's cool about the flail is you can throw a moon orb grenade into any area and then by pressing the grenade button it will teleport you in so you want to throw one of these grenades into the room above the orrery to teleport there and you're going to run to this particular moon raven blood pool and you're going to want to kill three zombies you'll notice that this will start taking souls and it will stop once you've killed three and you'll notice a floating rune will appear now with the flail out and using left trigger it's going to activate a flail vision and going to be using this vision to locate constellations across the map you're going to be looking for three sets of constellations one at a time per each moon raven blood pool that you fill up so for this first one i'm going to run around hold left trigger my vision's going to go a bit green and weird i'm going to be looking for some constellations there can be a location above the globe there can be two in the blood altar area one in spawn one on the overlook where the hammer is found and there's going to be one for a hole in the wall behind the electric melee perk if you found the constellations using left trigger you simply want to aim at the different stars and connect them up like connect the dots once you've got it right you'll notice a beheld the first message then you must return to the room above the cypher machine by throwing a teleport grenade in there and then killing three zombies on the middle moon raven blood pool rune and then repeat the process of filling that up then spawning the rune and then locating and completing the constellation puzzle in another location a total of three times so once you found the second one and connected them up teleport back into that room get a few more kills on the final one so you have the rune appear and run around the map find where the constellations are connect them up and you have a message which says witness the cosmos once you've finally completed that, you want to throw a moon orb into the Ori, so the actual globe itself, and teleport, and you'll be teleported into the Moon Raven Trial. There's going to be points where you're going to be killing zombies by uh, turning them friendly by throwing a orb and then using the L1 button or left bumper. And there's going to be a trial as well where you have to teleport over walls of fire. So when that wall of fire is appearing, you want to throw the grenade where the fire is going to be once it's past that location location and about to hit you teleport by pressing your grenade button and you'll complete that trial and you'll have the upgraded Fulian flail so we had the shield first we're now going to go through its upgrade process and this is without a doubt the most annoying of all of them and i would advise you try and do this as low around as possible as this will make this a lot easier now a heed of warning if you're playing this in co-op whichever player first picks up the shield will be the only person that can really do this quest and see some of the things involved in this quest so if someone is 
particularly wanting to do the upgraded shield or is particularly good at it, make sure that person is the only person that picks up the shield. But with the shield equipped around the map where we filled up the three blood runes at the start of the game, one of them is going to be mystifying with Geistcraft energy. It's going to have a sort of electrical mist. Only the person with the shield can see this. So in our game, the first pool we could see mystifying for me as I had the shield was the ice cave. So what you need to do is you need to acquire a fully charged corpse eater. This is like we've seen earlier to get the spine, one of the new zombies which consumes zombies. You can spawn these in by teleporting to Pack-A-Punch and you'll have two of these spawn in at a time. You're going to want to have these corpse eaters running around the map eating zombies until they are glowing and they are sprinting towards the players. And you're going to want to have the corpse eater be brought to this first blood pool and you want to shoot it and damage it enough on the blood pool and it's very specific the positioning as well this can be quite glitchy and a bit messy but you want to destroy the corpse eater by shooting it enough that it falls to the ground and slowly starts to explode as close to the middle of the blood pool as possible once it's exploded what you should do is you should notice that the person wielding the shield will now see a unique pattern atop the blood pool if it's still glowing with mist then it's not quite correct and you're going to need to get another glowing fully charged corpse eater to die on the middle of that blood pool and explode and once you've got a unique pattern on that blood pool you now know that you have completed that correctly and we can move on to the next blood pool so for us the next one that was glowing was the one on the outlook or the bridge so again spawn in these corpse eaters have them eat five zombies before they're fully charged and then guide it to the bridge blood pool and then kill it as close to the middle of that blood pool as possible this one's a very tricky one as normally when you start shooting it enough times it will start to explode and be just behind the blood pool rather than be straight on the blood pool this took about four attempts and this is quite messy as well as the explosion can down you so just make sure you have armor as well or you just run away from it when they explode so you don't get hurt but once you have done this right you'll notice the blood pool will have that unique blood pattern on it then you can go to the first and final one which for us was in the morgue by the melee perk so again we got one to explode and eventually we had a unique pattern above each blood pool once you've gone and done the three blood pools you then want to go to the spawn room and wait until you have a bomber zombie you either want to explode the bomber or make it drop its bomb by this plane debris here and then explode the bomb the plane debris should disappear and you can now pick up a radio as well as a speaker part take both of these parts down to the blood altar and place the radio on this pillar and then the speaker on this pillar right here and you'll notice that the main blood altar blood pool will now have a weird blood texture and what you need to do is go around the map and the order in which you filled up those blood pools you're going to want to go in and match up those textures so for us the first one was ice and our texture looked like this so i want to go to the blood pool now and change the frequency on the radio to match the texture that matches our first blood pool so when i've eventually done that i then want to take a single zombie and kill it on the blood pool once you've done that successfully you then need to change the frequency to match the second blood pool and for our game the second blood pool was on the bridge and the texture looks like this so I've now got to change the frequency so it matches that texture and when you have that texture it matches you don't want to take one zombie and kill it on the blood again and then you want to change the frequency again to match the third and final blood pool which was in the morgue room and ours looked like this so I'm changing the frequency to match it to also look like that and then once I've done that I want to kill one zombie on it and if you've done this correctly then the blood patterns on this blood pool should now be flashing and blinking between a load of them if you haven't got this effect then you've not got the right textures of those blood pools and you want to recheck those and enter those again now all you need to do is simply die on the blood pool and it will teleport you into the special room it's going to be some zombies that you need to kill but also there's going to be a weird ball of fire which looks a bit like a sun and you want to use the left trigger to block this attack by looking at the sun and holding left trigger which should block the attack you just repeat that twice you'll be out of there and you should now have 
all four of these upgraded melee weapons. You just want to insert these into the weapon pedestal at the top of the ice cave and you'll notice that all of these flames will be on the volcano and you'll have some dialogue between Vivian and Rideau. And now the pod in the right of the ice caves will be open and activatable to take you straight into the boss fight. Now before going into the boss fight, I highly recommend that you get all the perks you need. Definitely stamina up, speed cola, double tap and quick revive are what I would recommend because if your teammates are going down, you want to revive them as quickly as possible and make sure you have a full armor before you go in there. Jack and the boxes are also recommended as well and you can take the melee weapons in. Once you've placed them in and you've got the pod to open, you can pick the melee weapons back up and boy, you're going to need them as various phases of the boss require a specific melee weapon to be used in order to advance through it. So definitely don't get rid of them. Pick those bad boys up. If you're playing on solo or any number less than four players, the wonder weapon that you don't have equipped should spawn into the boss fight with you. But if you're boss fight ready, everyone get into that teleporter, activate it, and you're going to start the boss fight and enter the cutscene where you see Vivian get absolutely wrecked by this god king. So the boss fight is in four different phases. The first one is very simple. It's simply filling up souls on either side of the room. There's going to be a rune pad that is going to collect souls by killing zombies and you want to keep repeating this until both of them are basically lit up with Geistcraft energy and whilst this is happening you're going to get a few different attacks from the boss. He's going to fly around the room and I highly recommend you hide behind these huge icicles as they give you a lot of cover and there's going to be further parts of the boss fight that require you to hide behind them otherwise you're going to die. But during every attack that the God King does, you can actually do damage to him by shooting him either in the head or shooting him in the chest by the sword. We found that once these soul boxes were complete and the boss was shot enough times during these attacks, he does a motion where he pulls all of you guys in towards him and he's going to be floating above this middle rune and there's going to be guys craft energy coming out from all three of these runes. You want to be shooting the runes, the sort of soul boxes that you completed, you want to be shooting those that are lit up with energy on the left of the room, the right of the room and the middle and that should break the God King's shield and allow him to fall to the ground and you can damage him. Once you've done that we can move on to phase two. Also during phase one and phase two he also shoots out these weird bombs which you're going to need to avoid in order for you to basically not get damaged but we'll move on to phase two now. And as you can see from the footage, I highly recommend you bring in the SAP pistol upgraded. It's just super, super useful. When the boss says the sun and moon cower before me, you'll want to hide behind these ice pillars. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of damage inflicted on you. This is basically a way to block this attack from being effective against you. But for phase two, you're essentially going to be repeating what we did for phase one. You're going to be filling up the left and right soul boxes by killing zombies that spawn, but also avoiding this new attack which he has. He also will do a few others where he'll directly attack one of the players by shooting like a lightning bolt at them. So if you're just hiding behind these sort of icicle covers at all times, this boss should really pose no threat to you at this point within the game. It's simply just filling up these soul boxes again until you have them both filled up and then you're shooting the God King during his attack phases enough times that he will float to the middle, pull you in, and then we can repeat how we get him down by shooting the runes which are lit up with the guy's craft energy. For this third phase, you're gonna need a player with that Fulian hammer as these zombies at spawn are going to have the shields on them. And by throwing the hammer with R1, it gets rid of the shields so you can charge up these runes with zombies. But this gets pretty chaotic as it's very difficult to train up zombies which are in the bubble shields and those that aren't without getting a little bit confused. It's easy to traverse around the zombies which don't have shields but since you can't actually damage the ones with shields on without removing the shields it can sometimes get you some tricky situations where you can get cornered out and blocked by players but essentially you want to be repeating this process of just getting rid of the zombies by getting the shields off them and then filling up these soul boxes again and then shooting the boss 
after he's done an attack or during an attack phase whilst he's moving he's invincible but during an attack he does take damage and you can notice that when you notice him sort of startle and flail back a little bit but also use these bombs a lot more often during this phase of just throwing bombs in certain areas and if you're there when they explode they're going to do a lot of damage to you so just be careful of that Every time he says rise minions, I command you, that's also a note for you to realize that he's now put bubble shields on all of the zombies once again. So if you removed any of the shields, well, he's just put them back on the zombies. So you've got to be pretty quick. Once you damaged him enough that he goes into the middle and you can shoot the three runes, we're on to the fourth and final phase. And you might want to get rid of any bubble shielded zombies at this rate because he's not going to create any more so you can keep killing zombies but you're going to have a lot of corpse eaters you're going to have a lot of zombies and there's going to be a lot of times where he's going to pull you towards him and he's going to shoot this fire so for the player that has the flail he has to throw a grenade near to the boss teleport through the fire and then do enough damage to him that eventually once you've done this enough times and repeated this process and then damaged him whilst he's moving around doing his attacks and whilst he's done this flail fire attack next time you should be able to just put enough damage into him that he will fall to the ground and you'll get the cutscene and that will be the easter egg completed if you want to watch the cutscene on my channel it's linked down below in the description and after that you should have the king's fall trophy you should have unlocked a hidden challenge for completing this easter egg for the first time and that will be what we feel is the end of world war ii zombies if you enjoyed the video then i would really appreciate you guys dropping a like rating on it as it took absolutely ages i live streamed a ton of this easter egg hunt and i've got to give big shout outs to everyone in the community for finding these steps and for of course getting the ending and helping to bring this guide to you if you want any additional help with the other maps in world war ii zombies i have all of them linked down below in the description but thank you very much for watching i'll catch you next time